Uh, it's been five years since I sat on the stage and got shut out by Alex Fiedo, so glad he's not here. Always good to see Bill and his seersucker and uh, fighting for the, uh, we're fired up for the fighting Texas Aggies to be here and, and the 12th man and really excited for our players. Um, just the opportunity for them to experience this is once in a lifetime deal, hopefully well, more than once in a lifetime for, for one, of, one of us on the, up here, but uh, excited to be here, looking forward to getting the opportunity to play. Okay, we'll start off. Uh, just uh, wait to be recognized and we'll get a mic to you. Olin? Yeah, Jim, uh, Olin Buchanan, TexAgs.com. Um, someone who's been here and familiar with this park, do you have any kind of feel on uh, how your guys are suited for this park? And then secondly, uh, if just as a veteran here, the message you give to your guys who haven't been here before? Well, I think the message, uh, First and foremost is, you know, I believe you kind of have to have two personalities, right? So the same way they do at home. You, you have, they have to be a student when it's time to be a student and a player or an athlete when it's time to be a player. And, and when you come here, you want to try and balance. I think if you try to just have it be all baseball all the time and, and put a grip on them and put them behind bars in the hotel, then, then that's not going to be a good experience. So I think uh, the challenge is to be a baseball player when it's time to, be, to do baseball like we just finished with practice, um, and we'll have to tomorrow. And then when, when you have an off day or when you have a free couple hours, then you know go enjoy everything that Omaha has to offer uh, without tiring yourself out. So um, that's always been my message to the teams. Um, haven't won a national title yet, so uh, I'm hoping that's still the right thing to say. Uh, but, 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 I, but I do believe in, in that. I, don't, I, I, I think we would be, uh, I would be failing the players if we didn't encourage them to enjoy the things that are here without having it be a distraction. <clears throat> in terms of the ballpark, this is obviously a lot bigger ballpark than most people play in, foul ground included. Um, you know, speed in the outfield, being able to cover ground, uh, I think is important uh, on this field. Uh, the grass is a, a lot slower, uh, being in a northern climate. So there are, but, but we play on different fields all the time. You know, we played in Frisco early in the season, which is very similar to this in terms of the playing surface. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to playing good baseball, you know. And we've got to limit free bases. We have to catch the baseball uh, and get some timely hits against some really good pitchers. I apologize. <clears throat> this is my first news conference in three years, too. So uh, <clears throat> let's, let's limit questions first to the student athletes, um, and, then, and then we'll get Coach Schlossnagel after that. I have a question back here for the student athletes. Okay. I can adjust. Uh, Joe Menzer with uh, ESPN uh, SEC Network. Uh, guys, could you just talk about uh, Coach Schlossnagel coming in and the uh, just the mentality mentality that he brought and how he built the roster? Uh, I, mean, I mean, I know he inherited most of the roster, but uh, brought some other people in. Nathan, you start, please. Uh, just since day one, we've been talking about this, working for this. Uh, and now that we're here, all the work that we put in, this is a standard. And uh, I hope that we come back here next year and know we're going to do everything in our power. And this is, uh, we talked about being delusional about winning and just doing everything we can to be here. Yeah, ever since day one. So now we're here. Troy? Yeah, I'd agree. Just coming in, this was the <clears throat> message. This was the standard that was set. Um, you know, Coach does a great job of pushing you every single day, not only to be like who you are now, but to be a better version of yourself tomorrow. And, you know, he, he sees a better version in every single one of us, and he just pushes to pushes us to find that within ourselves. Um, you know, we know that he has our back and he loves us no matter what. And, you know, when you have someone behind you like that, when you have, you know, a, a leader that believes in you and, and pushes you to just be better every single day, um, again, it goes back to, like you said, being delusional about winning, being delusional about just getting better every single day. And I think that's really what, what's led us to be here. Hey, Mike. It's Mike Lopresti of NCAA.com for both of you. When you have a roster that has some holdovers, but there's a lot of guys, veterans coming in from a lot of different places, can you talk about what the meshing process was like for everyone to get together and, and become comfortable with each other? Uh, yeah, I mean, early it just took learning each other both on and off the field, right? So in the fall, we spent a lot of hours together at the field, but we try to spend a lot of hours with each other off the field as well. So, you know, you can, you can trust each other. Um, early in the season, 
had a little bit of, you know, it took us a little bit to get going, but I think that, again, just came down to learning how to play with each other, learning, again, how to trust each other. Baseball can be an individual game at some times, but it's, it's a very much a team game, right? So, yeah, it's you and the pitcher, but I have to be able to trust the guy behind me to get the job done, or I have to be able to trust the information from the guy in front of me. So once we kind of learned to trust each other, once we learned how to play with each other, um, the connection was already there off the field. The, the relationships that we had, the friendships, the brotherhood, that was there. And once it clicked on the field, I mean, we just started rolling. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, and when we first got here in the fall, it really honestly felt like a summer team, just a bunch of guys from different backgrounds coming together to play ball. And uh, just we've had some in the fall, we had some pool parties, just getting together, getting to know each other, having some fun. And that's what it's all about, you know. Uh, just getting together and tr knowing that you can trust them, like he said, and it, it clicked. It worked. The team morale is an all-time high. Feel great. Okay, Travis, and then Owen. Troy, I know a lot of. Oh, Travis Brown with the uh, Brown College Station Eagle. Troy, I know you have. Uh, a, a cliche is like, a lot of guys can reach out to guys who have been here before, but are you in a unique position that when if anything goes sideways on the mound, you can go out there and, and talk to these guys and, and have a little bit of experience in, in this park and in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, well. My experience is limited to one inning, so I don't really have that much playing experience here. But yeah, I've, I've seen what it looks like to win here, that's for sure. Um, I, I know what, what the standard looks like. But yeah, when, you know, at the end of the day, like it's still 60 feet, six inches away. The bases are still 90 feet away. Um, sure, there's going to be some more people in the seats, maybe some more people watching on TV, but. It's the same game. We're just going to have to continue to spread that message, continue to make sure that these guys trust themselves, trust their process, and just continue to play the same game we've played all year. I'm sorry, we had somebody in the back. Uh, Mark Garland, CWS 247. Troy, this is for you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about transferring in and being a leader right away? And then also, as a secondary question, your postseason experience not necessarily Omaha. Do you think that gives you an advantage when you come down here? Uh, well, yeah, the transferring process, I mean, it was a whirlwind experience. But, you know, once I got here, well, obviously it started with, you know, my previous relationship with Coach Yeski and um, really trusted him. And then I got, you know, to know Coach Loss over the phone. And, uh, you know, once I showed up on campus and met all the coaches, uh, you know, it was an instant click. And then meeting all my teammates. And, yeah, the leadership thing is pretty cool, especially when it's your first year. And, um, but at the end of the day, like I wasn't trying to be somebody I'm not. I wasn't going to try to come in here and push myself on these guys. I just wanted to be who I am um, and trust that you know who I am as a as a teammate w was going to be good enough. And it's pretty awesome that these guys have all trusted me and uh, I've been able to lead them this year. But as far as Omaha experience, as far as postseason experience, yeah, it again like the lights get brighter. But we talk about it. Pressure is a privilege and. We're privileged to be here, and we just have to keep doing our thing. Okay. Owen? Is it okay if I ask one each? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll start with Troy. Troy, um, you have been here, like we talked about. Any, do you notice any similarities between this team and the team you came here with before? Just say that grit and resilience. Um, you know, in, in 2018, the the – message of our team was to finish they got they got here in 2017 and felt like they came up short and so we had that that grit to finish everything we broke on was was the word finish and that was our goal um and we just gritted our way through it the whole time this team each team has a different story right so, so we've had a different story a different road of getting here but i think our grit and our resilience is the same and nathan um uh, if you'll kind of shed a little more light uh, on the blister issue and how it interrupted your season and where you are with that, uh, with the blister as far, and, and where you are with, in your pitching. So uh, that happened about four weeks ago now. Uh, just got a little blister on the inside of my foot. When I was trying to push off, it hurt. Uh, I really am not sure how it popped up. I think maybe the cleats had something to do with it, but I switched cleats. It's feeling good, totally 100% healed now. Feeling good, no issue at all now. Uh, Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Uh, just for either one of you, could you kind of speak to the challenge of Oklahoma 
especially in this field of, of power hitting teams, they, they have more of a running game than a lot of the other teams here. Uh, what's the challenge in the opener? I mean, any team you face here is going to be extremely good. So he talks about it all the time. They're either really good, really hot, or both, right? And I would say that Oklahoma is both right now. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll dive into scouting report stuff more tomorrow. Um, not super caught up in it right now. The coaches do a great job of, you know, taking and there's so much information you can gather and the coaches do a great job of gathering all that information and feeding us the information that we need rather than flooding our brains with, you know, stuff we don't really need. So we'll come up with a good scouting report. Um, we'll learn what we need to learn and then we'll just go out and play our game. Yeah, uh, we can get all the information in the world, but at the end of the day, we got to perform and it's all about us. And I know that uh, this might be one of the last times the 2022 uh, Aggie baseball team puts on the uniform, so we're going to give it all we got every game. Yeah. Travis Brown with Bryant College Station Eagle. Nathan, uh, just what, is it, what will it mean to you to, to get that ball, take those first warm-up pitches, and, and uh, be the starter for, for one of the games? It means a lot to me. It's really surreal. We talked about it the other night. Last year, I did not, honestly did not think I would be here. It's a crazy, surreal uh, experience, and just knowing that the coaches have that trust in me, be that number one guy, throw out the first pitch in the whole, the whole thing, it's crazy. And I, I know that trust, I feel it. I'm going to go give it my best. OK, any more questions for the student athletes? Oh, yeah. uh, for either of the guys, Ben Peck, uh, KX, um, just wanted to see, uh, you know, obviously, you guys going through this for the first time as a team, going through a lot of firsts in a while for this program. Um, just what's it been like to kind of do that collectively as a unit, but also, you know, the fan base kind of feeding off of that, following along, first time in Omaha for, you know, five years or so, and just, you know, what's it kind of been like? Nathan. It's been awesome. This, the support that they've showed throughout the whole season following us and believing in us, even in our rocky, rocky parts, it's, it's the 12th man. They're awesome. I, I love them. It's the best school, I think, in the world. Their fans are the best. And yeah, that's why you play for them and for, our, for each other. Troy, you want to respond to that too? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, he said it great, but um, I wasn't here last year, obviously, to experience the down year. Um, so I don't know what that feels like for them, but um, I, I feel what it feels like for them this year, right? I, I've, I've felt their passion coming into the year. I mean, just meeting fans early in the season, before the season started, just how much they've expressed, you know, what this place means to them and, and yeah, what it means to us. Um, They've supported us this entire way. There's, there's nothing like the 12th man. And uh, yeah, just we're excited to, to give them a team to root for here in Omaha. Uh, Joe Manzer, uh, SEC Network. Could you guys just, uh, each of you speak to how difficult it is to compete in the SEC and, and having four teams here, what that, what that means for the conference? And just speak to that, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I think playing an SEC uh, schedule puts you in the best possible scenario to have success when when you're battle tested every single weekend when there's you know not an easy at bat Friday through Sunday whether you know it's the eighth inning or of a blowout game or a tight game right it's there is no such thing as an easy at bat there's no such thing as an easy pitch um, when you can go through that week after week um, you know you feel you feel ready to take on anybody I think there's no surprise that there's as many SEC teams as there are here. Um, it's a great conference, but uh, there, you know, the teams that aren't in the SEC are also great teams here. So, yeah, and uh, having that confidence in knowing that we've had success going through the SEC, and so knowing that if we just play our game and just be us, uh, we're gonna have success again. And it's, yeah, just keep being us and not rise up to the challenge, but sink to our training. Guys, thank you. We'll let the players go, and we'll open up for questions for, for Coach Lawson. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Thank OK, we'll let them clear here, Mike. <coughs> Thanks. OK, Mike. Along that same line, Jim, Please. how would you describe the grind of an SEC tournament or an SEC season to someone who's never gone through it? You know, when you're not in the league, uh, two things happen. Like, you, you, you watch 
from afar and you see the atmospheres and you see the level of competition, uh, but you're also like, you know, the whole, it just means more phrase. Like you're just like, that's, that's a little bit elitist. Uh, and uh, I do, I, it's not that it means more and no disrespect to the SEC or Commissioner Sankey, it, it doesn't mean more. It means more to more people. There's more people, the schools are bigger, right? College baseball means a lot to the people in Fort Worth, Texas and, and TCU. There's just more people at Texas, 70,000 students, 510,000 former students, right? So it just means more to more people, in my opinion. Um, but, the, but the league itself is, it's, uh, uh, it, it literally is, it's such a gauntlet because of the level of play. The, the, every single team, if you said, you know, Alabama and Kentucky didn't make the NCAA tournament, if you'd have told me two weeks ago, Alabama and Kentucky are going to be in Omaha, wouldn't shock me in the least. Not, not for one second. And so just what Troy said, every single pitch has so much riding on it just to win a game, much less a series. Uh, and then you throw in the atmospheres uh, that are involved at just about every ballpark. Um, I mean, it, it is you know, on, a, on a Monday, the day after you play a three-game series, I, I at least, you know, I've, I'm in decent shape. Uh, but I'm literally mentally just so exhausted from the grind of – the decisions that happen on every single pitch and the way it can turn because the players are so good and the coaches are so good. Like you're, there's hall of fame coaches all across that league. And so the, the, you know, you're not facing somebody that, uh, is, isn't prepared there. Every single one of them is prepared at the highest level and every single school is committed at the highest level. There's no, there's no step back. Hey, reminder, please, please identify yourselves and your affiliation before each question. Uh, next question for Jim. Okay, Travis. Hey, guys. Travis Brown with the Bryant College Station Eagle. I assume uh, Nathan's your guy for tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow. Sure. Uh, yes. What went to that decision, and, and how important is it to get past that five-inning mark that seems to be eluding y'all? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we, I don't think it. I think if we were to try something different, you know, I mean, I thought about doing something different, maybe uh, using a bullpen arm to start a game, but I think sometimes that can send the wrong message to your team. Uh, and I just think, you know, Nathan, when he's, you know, he's pretty, I think he's won the SEC Pitcher of the Week twice during that stretch against Alabama, uh, Georgia, and Vanderbilt. So he's certainly capable uh, of, of pitching well here. Uh, so, I mean, he's, 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 he's ready. Uh, he's rested. Uh, and so hopefully he can uh, go out there and give us some length. Um, Oklahoma's a real offense. Like, they, it's, that, that's a real baseball team. There are some teams that you face – that just that, that's one thing about the SEC. There's not a, there's not a comparable offense in the SEC, in my opinion. Um, the SEC has a lot more ba you know bangers, a lot more homers. Parks are smaller, uh, and Oklahoma is built to win this thing. I can tell you that because because they, they can they the run game, the bunt game. They that's a real offense, and obviously we're facing a great pitcher and a great pitching staff. So uh, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. He's going to have to keep the leadoff hitter on base. He's going to have to manage the run game, and we're going to have to get, get outs when they bunt because uh, they do a lot of that. <clears throat> okay. Jocelyn. Jocelyn Stamp, Sports Illustrated Kids. What made you select Troy for the 12th man? For number 12? Yeah. 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 Uh, so when I took the job, you know, the 12th man, obviously, if, if you know that story or, or, or you know what that is, it represents our fan base. And the number 12 just means a lot uh, at Texas A&M and to the former students and the fans. And – when you walk in Kyle Field or the football stadium, you see home of the 12th man across the facade of the upper deck. And, and eventually, I'd like to put that in our ballpark. Uh, I don't think the number 12 or the 12th man is recognized enough on the baseball side. So I just felt like it should be an honor to wear number 12. And so we decided, hey, <clears throat> we're going to go through the fall. And, and whoever we feel like best represents the core values of the university, um, we're going to award them number 12. And it was a really hard decision especially to give it to a new player, right? And I, and I think you have to credit the returning players for how they handled it because it could have been really easy for somebody that's been at A&M and, and represented those values for two or three or four years and you know, say, what the heck, why, why are we giving it to this guy from Oregon State? But Troy did such a great job of not having an ego, being humble, uh, being conscientious, having quiet confidence to where he, he earned the respect of his teammates and the coaching staff. And frankly, it was a real easy decision. And, you know, we may not do it every year. Uh, we'll just see. But if we do it, uh, it's going to be to someone real special that represents everything the 12th man's about. Okay. Fine. 
uh, Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. Jim, when you piece this many new pieces together and it works so well and you end up here in a new uniform, how personally satisfying has this all, this entire journey been for you? Yeah, very. You know, I, I don't think about it that much. I did think about it today because <clears throat> it's real tough to leave TCU. I, I love that school. My kids go to school there. Um, sorry. Um, but I, I needed something myself personally different. And professionally, I felt like I, I, I believe there's a shelf life to everything. I would have been more than happy and honored to be the coach at TCU for the rest of my career. Um, but I felt like it was, I think I felt like it was a good time for TCU to have a new voice. And I felt like for me, me professionally, you know, I really wanted the opportunity to compete in, in the SEC. I really wanted, <clears throat> I'm not sure I want to coach uh, into my 70s. Uh, I'd like to do this maybe 10 or 12 more years if they'll let me, and then we'll see, we'll reevaluate it then. Um, and so it, it was just a personal, it was personally, it was a great time. And professionally, it was the perfect time for me to do it. Um, and then to, ha and to have, all the coaching staff and, you know, all the guys and like guys like Troy Clonch. I mean, Troy Clonch could have been a plug and play player for a, a thousand teams in a way better position with a roster than Texas A&M. But he chose Texas A&M. So when Palish or Clonch or Kaler or these transfers or, you know, Nathan Detmer could have transferred, you know. And uh, so when those guys decided to stay, the way I handle things is I feel a personal obligation to make sure that they have a great experience. And uh, I, it's very satisfying, not for just for me personally, but to be able to look over here and see Troy, you know, we didn't let him down, right? And so we'll see what happens while we're here. Ultimately, we want to win a national title, but uh, you, have a, you have the 12th man, you have an administration that's committed at the highest level. And my biggest fear in life is to let somebody down. And so we have these fans here. They're going to get to experience the College World Series, and hopefully we can stay here for a while. Okay, you got it back. <clears throat> Mitchell Kutcher, CWS 247. Coach, what allowed you to come in here and have this level of success in your first year? You know, I think just what we talked about, number one, the players. We have good players. I mean, you know, I mean, they might be orphans. They might be everybody from somewhere else, kind of. But they're good players. Troy Clonch is a real player. He'd be in professional baseball if it was more than a 20-round draft. And you see that a lot. That's why college baseball, I think, right now, we're in the golden age of college baseball. It's going to last for a while, but with a 20-round draft, um, more scholarships coming, we hope. This is the golden age of college baseball. And, um, but then, you know, and then our coaching staff. You know, you get guys like Nate Yeski, Michael Early, Nolan Kane, um, you know, Chuck Box, all the guys who, who came in and just really bought into a, a culture. Uh, we tried as best we could, and I think the guys who are from College Station will tell you, we tried to really dive in to what Texas A&M is all about, whether it be yell practice, football games, bonfire, you know, the war hymn, and, and if you're not a part of it, you don't understand. But once you're in, in it, you're like, wow, this is really cool, man, to be a part of something that's so much bigger than yourself. Um, it's just, I, I think that being an Aggie is what's really bonded us. Okay, but Joe? Joe Menzer, uh, ESPN, SEC Network. Uh, Jack Moss said the other day that he, he kind of talked about how he came down for his first trip and he said he went around the stadium with you. I just wondered if you, what your recollections of that were, and, and he just said that made a huge impact on his decision to come there. Yeah, Jack is, you know, he's, he, he was one of those first guys we had on a visit, one of the first guys we wanted right out of the gate, him and Dylan Rock were one of the first names I remember us talking to. And, and I think the thing with Jack is there's a lot of great programs that wanted him. He basically, and that's what I, I said to him on the field today. Uh, I was like, thank goodness we're here because I didn't want to let you down. But ironically, Arkansas and Ole Miss are here. Those are the other two schools that he was, he was looking at and visiting. So, um, but yeah, I remember walking around trying to sell him on a vision. And with a transfer, uh, you know, it's different than selling a high school player uh, because you're selling something that's in the distance. With a transfer, they may only have a year or two to experience it. So a lot of those guys, you know, they're, they're a little hesitant to be a part of a roster that just finished not making the SEC tournament. But I think he bought into our staff. He bought into what Texas A&M is all about. And I think he had enough confidence in himself to know that he could make a big impact. And, and that was the first time you'd seen the stadium as well? I thought you said that. First time I'd seen the stadium? Yeah, he said, he said he <laughs> no, I'd seen the stadium plenty in the, well, I mean, in the other dugout. First time you visited as 
it may have been our first official visit. Yeah, maybe he may have been the guy with first official visit, yeah. something like that. So yeah, that that was neat. I know you've seen this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Over yeah. here, we have time for two more questions. Austin Ulmer, MavRadio.fm. Uh, Coach, could you just tell me if you've noticed any kind of difference with this Texas A&M team to some of the previous teams that you brought to Omaha at TCU years before? The biggest difference is starting pitching. Uh, you know, we we don't we don't have we don't have the depth of starting pitching that um, most of those teams have. Uh, in college baseball this year, you don't really see that as much. Some of these teams have that, which is why they're here. Um, so that would be the number one difference. This is a really offensive club uh, that, that we have. We didn't have – we had a couple offensive teams like that but the, at TCU, but the ballpark at TCU plays sing, significantly different. The wind blows in most days, so it's a pitching and defensive built stadium, whereas – uh, A&M's park is once the weather changes, the wind blows out a lot. So the home run and the extra base hit play a big role in that. So that, the biggest difference would be the starting pitching. But we have a but because our starting pitching hasn't been elite, our bullpen's really good because we use it a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, and especially those three lefties: Palish, Menifee, Will Johnston, Brad Rudis, and Cortez is going to play a big role in this tournament. So those guys are seasoned because they've pitched a lot. Okay, this will be our last question. Hi, Jim. Uh, Joe Nugent from WOWT TV here in Omaha. I know it's been a long season, but arriving here, does it does it feel like a fresh, exciting start for for the guys and for you? Yeah, you know, for for, for me, the, the, this is this this is the pearly gates of college baseball, right? This is where this is what you dream about. This is why you do all the other stuff, right? Nobody gets into coaching. I don't. I hope not to recruit, right? You don't get into coaching to raise money or you know, go do all the other things. You get in the coaching to work with kids and have them see, see success on the field and end up in the College World Series. So um, I forgot your question, but... Uh, the excitement but, of being here. Yeah, the excitement of being here. Just, yeah, just, you know, you, you, you want to balance the excitement of being here with, with winning. And so uh, when you land and you instantly come to the ballpark, and, you, and for me, I've been here enough to know how, how awesome it is and what the fans are going to be like and just how your people are treated. Uh, you know, this is the uh, Omaha's, it's, it's everything you think about. Every time you lift a weight, every time you make a recruiting phone call, this is what you're thinking about. And so to have that, that hard work uh, res resolve itself in, in being here is just, it's very gratifying. I sure would like to play, win the last game, though, you know, and that's something that, is, uh, that ultimately we, we, we want to be able to do. Jim, thank you. Yep. Uh, if you have any other requests for A&M, Thomas Dick is their media contact. And I guess that's the biggest, biggest adjustment you had to make from Brandy to Thomas. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're both great. <laughs> and not wearing a hat up here. What's up with that? Uh, yeah, for, for Detmer's flow, it looks awesome. <laughs>